Thank you for joining us for our mini series on supporting your preschoolers and school agers behaviors. You can check out all three of these videos on our YouTube channel. My name is Jamie Lassane Spears and I am the Family Engagement Specialist at Child Care Answers. Today we're going to be talking about how you can support your child's emotions. And really it's pretty amazing because it's all brain science. Adults operate with their emotions and thinking and balance. Events and circumstances may throw off our balance at times because I know I'm not always rational, but developmentally, our brains are designed so that we can think before we act, manage those emotions. Well, according to the book, The Whole Brain Child, an amazing book I recommend, in the young children, emotions are really stronger because the thinking part of the brain is not fully developed. Babies are born with their downstairs brain ready to go. It is actually developed in utero. This is the part of our brain that is responsible for functions like eating and sleeping, but then also it houses our fight and flight impulses as well. As a toddler, their upstairs brain begins to develop and it continues to develop until the mid twenties. This upstairs part of our brain is really what we consider the thinking part of our brain. It's where we use all our logical thinking skills. And this includes things like self-control and planning. It also is what allows us to really think before we act on our emotions. So why is this important? Well, it's important because your child will have big emotions and this is completely appropriate. And I think it helps as adults for us to remember that emotions are stronger because that thinking part of their brain, that upstairs part of the brain has not fully developed. As our children grow, their logical and thinking part of the brain is growing too. As preschoolers and school agers, it's already developing and starting. Because of this though, we cannot really expect them to make good decisions, remain calm and consider others' feelings all the time because it's just starting to be developed. If we do expect this, we can be setting ourselves up for failure, but then also our children. When their feelings and behaviors are just too big to manage, it's not the time to teach or recorrect behaviors. And this is because they just cannot rationalize in this state. Their thinking brain is completely shut down because their emotional aspect of their brain is just on fire. They're, they're really in their feelings. So what we need to do is help them and support them regulate those emotions first so that we can come in and, and then support them with the behavior. At the end of the day, we will struggle to calm our children when we are struggling to find calm ourselves. I think as a parent, there are times that I struggle with this. I, it's hard to stay calm when your child is really upset or really going against what you need them to do in the moment, especially during times like transitions. But as the adult, I think it's important to remember that we have the power to escalate and de-escalate behaviors. There's this concept of co-regulation that many educators and families are practicing. Co-regulation is a warm and responsive interaction that gives support and models to children how to self-regulate. So it's, it's a pretty great way um, to help your child see what they need to do with their bodies in order to find that calm. It teaches them to understand and express their thoughts and feelings and behaviors. A really key part of co-regulation co is this idea of warm and responsive interactions meaning that we have to be calm. So what are some tips for us as parents finding our calm? As a teacher and a parent myself, I have been there and there are a few ways that I have used um, in, in the past and I continue to use um, as a parent. First one is just taking a deep breath. Um, it's pretty simple, but I do know that sometimes we forget to do it in the moment. I typically say to the children something along the lines of, I'm feeling really frustrated right now and I need to take some deep breaths. And then I modeled those deep breaths and you can model them in a lot of different ways. We have this um, tool called the five finger breathing where you just breathe in and out. And you do that five times just to show them that I need to take a moment just like you might need to take a moment. And then also you do have the power to walk away if their safety is not a concern, obviously. And you can say something along the lines of, I'm feeling a little frustrated right now and I think I need a break, I need a minute to myself. Can we talk about this when we come back? Or we will talk about this when we come back. And it's really important to have a safe space for, for your child to go to during this time. And you know, it's not always needed for you to walk away, but I think it's important to know that if it's just too much, you can, and it's okay. Another great way to teach emotional language and managing behaviors is through books. 
Books are essential tools for preschoolers and school agers. These are a few of my favorite. Um, I really enjoy the book, The Color Monsters, because it helps give a visual to feelings um, and you can create um, art afterwards to make like a red, red monster or a yellow monster, the red being angry, yellow being, I don't know, you have to read the book to find out. Uh, but I also like the book, The Magic Breath as well, because it's a visual representation of what it looks like to take deep breaths. Lastly, I really encourage you to create a calm down space or a calming space in your home that really gives your child the physical space they need to relax or take breaks. So um, what this is, is a space for them to process their feelings, relax, and it's a special area just for them. And it doesn't really need to be elaborate. It could just be a couple pillows, a stuffed animal, and books. Usually, I encourage families to practice using the space together, to make it a space where they know how to use it. Um, and that will take time. It's not something that they'll understand right away. But it's important to show them and model to them how to use it. Even maybe when you're frustrated, you could go there and just say, I need a break. I'm going to go to the cozy corner or the calm down space, whatever you want to call it. And just sit there and like read a book or do whatever you want to do just to model how to use it for them. It is important that this area is not used for a punitive, like a timeout or a consequence. So the space is really for them to just be able to calm down that downstairs brain uh, so that they can talk with you through the next steps and the consequences. You wanna celebrate it as a spot for them to go to relax. Maybe in the morning after breakfast, they go there just to chill out before they need to transition to school. More tips to support your child's behaviors. Really encourage you to check out part three on Child Care Answers YouTube channel. Until then, we would love to hear your tips and tricks for supporting your child's emotions. Please share in the comments.